Welcome back everybody. Welcome to the fourth in my mini sort of series of tutorials for modding Kerbal Space Program. In the first part I showed you how to use and install mods using CCAM or the Comprehensive Kerbal Archiving Network. In part two I showed you how to manually install modifications and check for the usual sort of, I would say the most common problems. And in part 3, I showed you how to tweak existing parts and also showed you how to add a config from the Stockolite configs for real fuels. So basically you could use one of your engine packs which wasn't supported natively by the configs pack provided by Raptor 831. So you could actually add your own in. I showed you how to do that. And here in part 4, I'm going to show you how to create a flag for your space program. That's very easy to do, and it adds a lot to the gameplay. The actual feel of the game itself, you can actually really personalise it for yourself. Okay, so first of all, we need to find the core, the installation folder for Kerbal Space Program. Okay, so here we are, back in the installation folder for Kerbal Space Program. And as I've said in the three previous videos in this series, you need to always, or at least the best practice, is to remove the part database and the physics database. It's always possible to have a mod installed, so it modifies the gameplay and adds parts, either those two or both, in the same mod pack. And so part database and physics could be modified. So it's always best practice to remove those. You can do that regardless and just remove. If you're having problems loading the game in after playing it for a while, the first thing is to remove part database and physics. It allows the game to reset. And it will regenerate those two files if there isn't nothing. If there's, any, if there's nothing wrong, then it will regenerate those two files automatically. Okay, so what we need to find, we need to go and find the flags that the game uses. So it's been game data folder. Now if this is the stock installation, if you've got a stock installation, you haven't modified it anywhere, you haven't added anything to it, you will see only the squad folder. So you'll only see the squad folder and the game data folder. So we need to be inside the squad folder. We need to look for flags. Now it's pretty easy to find. There is a folder called there, uh, flags. So it's quite simple to find. Now this is, these basically are all the stock flags that the game uses. The stock flags. Now certain mods, in fact I would say majority of mods, especially on the big packs like Modular Rocket System, KW Rocketry, USI's suite of mods by Rover Dude, all of those have their own flag packs. So they actually inject their own flags into the game. You don't need to add them in here separately. But we don't want to do that. We just want to modify a, a, a flag so it's, it reflects what we want the game to feel like for ourselves, our own experience. So, spheres. I'm going to pick on this particular one here. So, I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you how to actually manipulate the image. Now, I prefer to use a program called GIMP or the GNU Image Manipulation Program a link of which to the download section of the website from the official website itself is in the descriptions directly underneath this video so you can go and download the program yourself so what we're going to do now it's always best practice as well to never alter the actual file itself. We want to create a copy of the file and manipulate the copy of it so we don't actually touch the original. So the original is still there intact. So to do that, I left click and right click and go down to copy and left click on copy. Then click anywhere over here, away from any files, so we don't select any of these. We deselect all of it. Then right click, go down to paste and left click on paste and we have a copy. We have spheres copy. Now to rename it, you just left click and hold down the left mouse button for slightly longer than you normally would. A few seconds, then release. 
and it highlights the whole title. Now you can either hit delete or backspace if you want to delete the entire name or you can click on the arrow keys. Just tap on arrow key, only if you care the keys. And that gets rid of the highlight, but it still leaves the, the cursor flashing in the actual title slot itself. So now I can just hit the backspace key and delete the first part of the title. I'm just, put, put, I'm just going to put. So I'm going to manipulate the colours, make that map less green and orange, and maybe a touch of blue. Try and make those circles that actually look like planets. So I'm going to call it Spheres Colourful. So if you are using GIMP, when you install GIMP, it into it actually installs itself into your system, and it actually integrates into your menus. So you can left click on there, right click, and then edit with GIMP. Obviously if I go down here and click edit, I'll just open up the normal Windows Paint program. I don't want to do that. I prefer using GIMP. So we edit with GIMP. And then we fire GIMP up. Just like that. Now to make this image larger, just tap the plus key on your numeric keypad. And also reverse is the same tap the negative key or the minus key on your right keypad to make it smaller so we zoom it in this doesn't change the dimension of the actual image when you save it it's still 256 so we can see up here the top left hand corner it's 256 by 160 so it's 256 pixels by 160 and it's RGB color and it's seen as a single layer image okay so now obviously I can't cover every single aspect of GIMP it is absolutely jam-packed with different tools it would take an entire course of videos possibly dozens of videos just to cover in just a handful of the tools and what they can actually do but I'm just going to show you how to actually manipulate this image by itself I'm not going to show you how to use GIMP itself I can't I can't cover that so we have normal, we have file, which is pretty basic. We have edit, which gives you copy, copy visible, undo history, undo, fill with pattern, all those sort of the usual paint program, menus, and functionality. So we have all our manipulation. We have the tools, selection tools, paint tools, transform tools. So you can actually take an image and modify it. You can rotate them, you can create perspective, you can flip them, rotate, do all sorts. It really is a it's a really easy it's a very 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 nice little program. It's it, at first it can seem quite daunting but it is actually quite easy to pick up we have uh, blurring, enhanced distort light and shadow which is very useful you have drop shadow all sorts okay so so what we need we need to modify this image so down here we have, which I'll start up here, we have fill, which is the usual, you click on it, choose a colour, you click on the image and it fills the particular sort of selection that you click on. Text, which is obviously the usual. Uh, if you want to add text or anything like that to an image, all you have to do is draw a box, left click, Hold on the left mouse button and drag a box around and then we have the different fonts a lot of, I mean I do mean a lot of fonts to select from size now the clever part about GIMP is that you don't have to click any of these slots to modify size or the sort of 
yeah, size, aspect ratio, anything like that, fill rate, flow, or anything like this. You just have to hover your mouse button, hover your mouse pointer over the slot, and then roll your mouse wheel. Increase and reverse to decrease the size or whatever value it is that you're manipulating in that particular selection. So I want the paint and here we have colour selection, we have foreground and background colours. That is a background colour, this is the foreground colour. We want to manipulate the foreground, the, the background colour and the foreground colour. What we want to do, we want to select one or the other. We can actually do both. So we'll select the for a foreground colour and you can either create a custom colour here by manipulating radiance, then the actual depth of colour or we can do the other way. If you have an image with a colour on it that you really want to use then you have to click here and it clicks the eyedropper then click the colour this basically picks the colour, it's called the, it's called the colour picker you can actually pick whatever colour you want from every, any image so if I wanted to choose let's say if I had a picture of some colour and it was here it can be anywhere at all, you can open it up in normal paint packages and it will detect the colour when you tap there so you tap anywhere on this image and we get the colour then all you have to do is click OK and that is the colour we will actually use let's just demonstrate So you can paint with that particular colour. If you want to undo it, the easiest way is through a shortcut. So we go up to edit, undo airbrush. Now obviously you wanted to not have to not have to do this, go through the menus, you can just use a shortcut. So the keyboard says Ctrl plus Z. So we'll do that first of all through the menu, and then it's Ctrl, hold down the left control key and tap Z. And that's it. You can clear it up. If you go wrong, you can clear it up quite easily. So, I don't want to alter it to that. I want it to be a blue. It's being nice. It's all planety sort of blue. Planety blue? Whatever. So, it's about there. So, now we want to. Pick up the flow rate and the rate of paint out of the actual bush itself. Just so I'm not holding it down for half an hour while we're trying to fill an image. So, obviously, there are different bushes you can use, different shapes, a star, all sorts of different types of colours. That's actually quite an interesting one called Supernova really interesting one okay, it's a very bright sort of area in the center just like a supernova just like a star exploding or fireworks going off or even a rocket engine so we'll get rid of that i was just to show you what some of the actual paint bushes look like so, I want something slightly larger. Well, it actually matches that almost. So we increase that. Now, like I said, just hover your mouse pointer over the slot. Then just roll the mouse, but the actual mouse wheel. And we'll try it again. Almost exact. We'll go to about another two points up. Perfect.
So I want to modify the slightly more. We're going to bring it into sort of a green area, like a greenish sort of tint to it. I want to modify the opacity of this particular layer. And then again, let's get stronger green. Let's bring that down a little bit more. And the flow of it. I just controls how much pain actually comes out of the actual nib. Because as you can see, it's almost like a fountain pen. Basically, it's like it's a spray pen. It's a, it's a, it's an air pen. Bring the size down slightly. So you can spend as long as you want to doing your flag. Oh no, terrible. Never mind. Try and create like a slightly different tint. Because anyway, just to modify the, the actual, the actual image itself, that's sufficiently different, I think, just to prove a point. Okay, so what I want to do also, I want to create the image of a stencil on the side of a rocket launcher. So if it's a rocket on the side of a tank, you don't want this greenery. It's a bit of a bit tacky, to be honest. I want it to look like a stencil on the side, so it's been so almost like it's been professionally added to the side of the tank. Exactly what um, SpaceX or NASA or anyone like that in the space agencies around the world, the Russian space agency, where they have an actual emblem, and it doesn't look like this. If you've got a white tank, and it's got this image like this with a very sharp edge, green, it doesn't look very nice. Doesn't look as nice as it could do. So now the thing about select, let's go down to select, select by colour. And if I select by colour, because this isn't the all the same grade of green, it won't all be selected. Exactly what I'm talking about right there. It's always best if you're gonna do a flag from start, from the scratch. Rather than manipulating another another one another flag, be f so manipulating a flag that already exists. So it's best you make sure that the background is one grade of colour. So if it's green, make it the same green. That way, the select tool can actually select it all fully. But I will still show you how to actually make it so that it. Uh, so we need to select by colour, then left click on whatever colour is that you want to make it transparent. Which I can't, because of the grade between there and there, I can only select part of the image. So I'm going to select this part here. So at least part of the ball, the globe, this sun basically, which is what it's supposed to be, actually becomes transparent. So now we go down to layer. We want transparency. So it's layer and transparency. I want to add the colour to alpha. So colour to alpha. And alpha just means the computer ignores that particular colour. Exactly the same way as the superimpose on green screens behind people in films, special effects, CGI's, things like that. Where they want to superimpose an image on the background that isn't actually there in real in real life behind the actor. 
that's how they do it. So select colour to alpha. So right now we want to make this green, this here, go to alpha channel. Right now by default, GIMP automatically for some reason, I don't know why, but I think it's just default, just it's got to choose at least one colour. So it's always it always defaults to white. So you just click anywhere in this slot. Then you click the colour picker again. I want to pick the background colour, I want to make alpha. Now, it's always a good idea to select it twice. Because as you notice, the window disappeared. So it could be that it hasn't actually selected that colour. I mean, it's possible that it's just wiped it off, actually wiped the, the actual pop-up window. So I'm going to do it twice. Just to make sure, it's always a good idea to do it anyway. Doesn't do anything. So there we have that colour. Now here, in this current alpha channel. So we click OK. And there's the image again. There's the preview of the image. And there we go. So wherever you see this pattern, that area will be ignored by the computer. Not just here, but in the game itself. So obviously, as I said, it's a little bit sort of it's difficult to actually get an alpha a colour to go to alpha. The entire background is a different grade. So if you're gonna make it play an image from scratch, as in create a flag from scratch or any image, make sure that the background is the same gradient of the colour. The same colour and the same grade of colour. Okay, so once we have that, I want to click on file and go down to overwrite. Now right now this is fine. We can actually overwrite the image because we created a backup. This is basically the backup that we are manipulating. So I'm not going to touch the original image. So I'm going to overwrite it. I'm going to close GIMP. Discard changes. Basically that just means I, any changes here will not be remembered by the paint program itself. Does not mean that we're going to wipe off our changes from the image itself. It will still be there. As you can see. As you can see if we blow this aim up. Now As you can see, we have a white image here, which matches the background here. So that is basically it. Your flag is here. If you want, as I said, if you want to create a flag from scratch, just make sure it shares the same dimension, which is 256 pixels by 160 pixels. Just make sure that it matches those dimensions. But to be perfectly honest, all you have to do is create a new image using the same, using the actual same dimensions. Some flags are a different, a different dimension. Most are 256, but you can go up to 512 by 320. But to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't really bother. You don't get anything extra out of it. Doing so doesn't really give you anything extra. Just takes up slightly more room. No real reason to do it. Okay, so and as soon as you load your game up, you better select it. This new flag in your game when you first start your game. Okay, so that's it. As I said, I'll leave a, a link in the description. To GIMP if you want to try using that it's very easy to actually to learn to use it it can be rather daunting like I said but once you get used to using it you realize what parts you actually need and what parts you don't really want to bother with but it's very very easy to use and it's very 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 versatile okay so that is the end of part four hope you've enjoyed this mini series of tutorials and modding space program your own space program with your own flag and your own mods and I hope if you enjoyed this video 
you can share it. If you think someone will benefit from any of these four videos, then share it. Please share it. I hope this is of use to you. And if it was, click like. Leave a comment if you have any questions. Then either comment or you can message me. I don't mind messages. As I keep saying, I don't mind messages. Just try and be as concise as possible. If you have a problem with a particular mod that you may think I may be able to help you with, then try and provide a link in the message that you send me. Okay, so hope you enjoyed it. Hope it's useful. Click 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 like. Share and subscribe for more. I'll make a ton of videos. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much. Bye bye.